Hello everyone, welcome back to Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is Cycle 3, Week 18, and today we have a science video. In today's video, we are going to cover four more elements in the periodic table, and these are the last ones that we are going to cover, although they are not the last ones on the periodic table. So before we get started, I wanted to remind you to subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode from Doodling Through Education. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I'll go ahead and include a link in the description. It's through a website called Buy Me A Coffee. So you can do that there if you would like. And on that note, let's start doodling. Like I said before, today is our last week talking about different elements in the periodic table. And today, we are going to talk about four more. The first one we are going to talk about is fluorine. Fluorine has an atomic number of nine, and we know this means that there are nine protons in the nucleus. It also has an atomic mass of about 19. Fluorine is actually one of the most reactive of all the elements, which makes it incredibly dangerous to handle. Fluorine will react with almost every other element, and so this makes it difficult for scientists to handle its pure form. In standard conditions, fluorine forms a gas, and it is made up of two fluorine atoms. This is called a diatomic gas. It is a pale greenish yellow color, and it has a very strong smell. It is important to note that fluorine is very toxic for humans and it can, can corrode many things. Many of the reactions with fluorine are very sudden and explosive. As I said, it's very reactive and so it will burn with water, gold, steel, and even copper. Because of its reactivity, it does not occur as a free element in nature and is rarely used in its pure form. But we do use many fluorine compounds. For a long time, chlorofluorocarbons were used in freezers and air conditioners, but today they have decided that they can damage the ozone layer and have used different types of gases. If you ever paid attention at the dentist, they may ask your mom or dad if they wanted fluoride applied to your teeth. Fluoride is actually a reduced form of fluorine and is helpful in preventing tooth decay. And if you live in the city, it is actually even added to tap water and you will also notice that it is in your toothpaste. Let's move on to our next element that we are going to talk about today, and that is neon. Neon has an atomic number of 10, meaning that there are 10 protons in the nucleus and an atomic mass of about 20. A normal neon atom is colorless, and odorless and appears as a gas. It is what we call an inert gas. And this means that neon will not combine and make a compound with any other element or substance. Uh, something interesting about neon is that when it is in a vacuum tube, it glows with a reddish orange light. Neon by itself is a very rare element on Earth but it can be found in very small amounts in the Earth's atmosphere and even in the Earth's crust. And although it is rarely found on Earth, neon is a very common element in stars and is even the fifth most abundant element in the universe. We use neon in lighting signs. If you ever see in a shop window a glowing sign, it may use neon to make that sign glow. However, neon is only used to produce the 
reddish orange glow and we use other gases to create the other colors in these neon signs. Let's move to the next element and that is sodium. Sodium has an atomic number of 11, meaning there are 11 protons in the nucleus and an atomic mass of about 23. Sodium by itself is also a very reactive element. It is in its pure form a soft metal that can be easily cut. It is a silvery white color and burns in a yellow flame. Sodium may sound familiar to you because table salt has sodium. And this is actually a compound of sodium and chloride. You may also be familiar with sodium because baking soda is a compound using sodium as well. And many of these sodium compounds are often water soluble, meaning that they dissolve in water. Sodium is not often found in its pure form because it is also very reactive. It is only found in these compounds that I mentioned previously. Sodium chloride or salt can also be found in ocean water, salt lakes, and even underground. Everybody uses sodium every day in the form of table salt. It is an essential mineral that is needed for animals to survive, but most people use it also for adding flavor to their food. Another application of sodium chloride can be um, in de-icing your sidewalk. If you ever see people spreading salt on the sidewalk, it is because it helps make the ice melt. Sodium can also be used in medicine and has many practical purposes in organic chemistry. It is important to note that sodium is considered non-toxic when it comes to salt, but if you eat too much salt, this can cause high blood pressure. And last, we are going to talk about magnesium. Magnesium has an atomic number of 12, which means it has 12 protons in the nucleus, and an atomic mass of about 24. Magnesium is also a light metal with a silvery white color, but when exposed to air, magnesium will actually tarnish and become protected by a thin layer of oxide. When magnesium comes into contact with water, it produces hydrogen gas. If you put some magnesium in water, you will begin to see those gas bubbles start to form. If you were to burn magnesium, it would burn with a very bright white light. And an interesting fact about magnesium is that in its powder form, it, was, it used to be used to help produce a brighter flash when taking pictures. Magnesium is an element that is abundant on Earth, and it is found in over 60 different minerals in the Earth's crust. And even the compound magnesium oxide is the second most abundant compound in the Earth's crust, and it makes up about 35% of the crust when considering the weight. And that's all we have for today. Remember, as always, Continue learning about these different elements. See um, who discovered them. Like I said last week, that's a great extension project. Which scientists discovered these elements and what use did they foresee they could use these elements for? And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care.